Hey guys, Chris, Stratomatic Delaware, and I thought I would do a uh, tutorial through the rule book for the basic version of Stratomatic Hockey. And uh, come on, Marvin. Let's get this sucker shoveled. Get off of there. We got some ice hockey to do. Get out of there. Come on. Come on. Get out of there. You drunk stinker. That's more like it. Marvin the Zamboni guy and the Stratomatic Delaware Zamboni. Let's hear it for him, folks. All right, here we go. All righty. So, we, uh, let's just go through the rule book. I mean, you've got the introduction. It's going to be pages one through four. It's going to be a short rule book video, but a really in-depth how-to video. So, we're going to try to cover everything very well here. Uh, get started. The rules of pro hockey apply. Well, if you're like me and you don't follow pro hockey, you don't know all of the rules of pro hockey. But by and large, if you're a kind of a casual, have been follower, there are changes year to year, as everyone in, who follows sports is aware of. But uh, I, I know enough, I'm good to go. The only thing I had to brush up on was uh, overtime and shootouts because that came about in 2006 and I had no experience so I had to go to the rule book, the PDF online. So I printed it out so I could do it right. Um, but let's uh, just go on through. Each team consists of 16 skaters and two goalies. Uh, for, and you can purchase additional players for season sets as well, the more current sets, not the historic ones. Each coach must then determine the starting forward lines, left wing, center, and right wing, and the, defensive, and the defenseman pairings, left and right defense, to be used throughout the game. The roster sheet suggests lines and pairings, or you can assemble your own groupings. <clears throat> well, I won't give advice. we will show what the stuff on the cards means here in a moment. Uh, designate one team as home and one team as the visitor. So the visiting team for this demonstration is going to be the Detroit Red Wings and the home team for this demonstration, the New York Rangers. 1991-92 seasons. That's right, Stevie Ezerman, Mark Messier, those guys. Messier, Messier. I say Messier because of astronomy, but I think it was Messier. That's, he's a lot messier than he used to be. <laughs> okay. Place each starting player in the area marked for each position on the playing board. So, we have our starting lines. We'll take all the other players, including... I already separated second line, uh, forward line, and second defense line. Make it easier to go. And a lot of times, I'll go ahead and enter those players on the score sheet. So that way, when I'm making the line changes, the first line change doesn't take inordinately long. Um, so just to give a head start and I normally got a lot more room on the table, but I wanted to be close enough to be able to make out what was on the cards. So normally you would have that much space off the game board to put your card all the way over there, but due to space constraints and wanting to have things centered as best as possible, we'll just put them where they belong. But basically you're Visiting right wing is going to be there. And you can't even see him, so we are going to have to bring them all the way to the middle. Next to him goes the visiting right defenseman. So we've got Paul Eastbert. We have Brad McCrimmon. We have Stevie Ezerman center for the Red Wings. We have uh, left defenseman Nicholas Lidstrom. And we have left wing Sergei Fedorov. Yeah, I remember that name. He was beast. And the goalie, and I put the goalies off to the side like this. Um, this chart is used for advanced or super advanced play. I don't know which, however, since I don't use it, I'm not going to concern myself with it at this time. This is just a basic game. Also, these tables on either side. One is for what type of offense you're running and also how many four checkers. Advanced, super advanced. We're just doing basic. So these are not needed for the basic game. For the Rangers, and again, I've separated uh, second line forward, second line defenseman. 
But starting for the Rangers, left wing is going to be Adam Graves. Uh, left defenseman, Brian Leach. Center, Mark Messier. Right defenseman, James Patrick. And Mike Gartner is the right winger for the Rangers. And goalie, John Van Viesbroek. I can't even get the goalie in on it. Oh, my goodness. I got the camera way down. That's all right. I forgot. Let's do this. So that way there's no glare, but you can still see it. <laughs> Love knowing about how light reflects off surfaces and how cameras work. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, of course, all the way on the edge or even off the board, that's how you would have it set up. So that way you would be able to roll the dice on the board. Um, but now you've got them set up. Uh, let's see. Uh, you have the action deck. And this is the action deck. These small perforated cards. That's the basic action deck. The advanced action deck is larger full-sized cards. But these cards really help the game move on through. They really, really do. And um, you also have included with that forward line, forwards line change, defenseman line change, and these are inserted into the deck. I'll show you how in a moment. And end of penalty, I suppose if there is a penalty, you would uh, insert it. Um, but I don't see the use for that, and it doesn't tell you how to do that in the basic rules, not that I saw. So we'll get around to that. Uh, but place the action deck and the split deck, a 40-card deck. This will give you various results such as breakaway. Well, it gives you a split. It gives you a 20-sided die, um, random numbers, 1 to 20. You can also use a d20. That's what I use personally. So you're not going to see me using that number for anything that calls for a d20. Uh, you're going to see me roll the die. But it gives you possible breakaways, rebounds, uh, intimidation, icing, loose puck, passing, assists, and injury. And we're going to read through all of this and we're going to see how to use all of those aspects of the split deck cards. And usually you'd put them right off here to the side of the board somewhere. Keep them handy for both players. So... Let's see. Well, then, yeah, place them near the playing board within easy reach of both coaches. Each action deck is divided into two sections, home and visitors. Separate the two forward line change cards and the one defense man line change card from the perforated deck. Prior to each period, shuffle the action deck. Prior to each period, shuffle the action deck. So we're going to go ahead and do that as per the rules. Mix them up really good, best as you can with small cards that are perforated like this that don't shuffle very well. Okay. And then, count off 10 cards from the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Place the first forward line change card right there count off five more place the first defense line change card in the middle of the deck count five more place the other forward line change card that way you can change lines we're not going to do that well we will do that for this it'll be kind of a pain with how tight this is but uh we will change the line so you can see how to do it. All right. Made that executive decision. Okay. Um, for those who prefer to play with four forward lines, place the first. It gives you an alternate if you want to play with more forward lines. Um, so that way you can have more changes. Uh, the action deck is now set for play. Do not change the forward lines until the forward line change card on the top of the is on the top of the action deck. And the coach in control of the puck has to pick up the top action card. 
Now, if a penalty occurs during a line shift, replace the line on the ice at the time with the power play team. When the power play is over, the line on the ice at the time of the penalty returns and remains until the next forward line change is indicated. That means penalty occurs during a line shift. Um, replace the line that's on the ice at the time with the power play team. So the strong team, the power play team, is going to change their line. And then when the power play is over, the team on the line on the ice at the time of the penalty returns and remains until the next forward line change is indicated. Okay. The basic version 1.0 common play results. Here are the readings you will encounter the most often from. The action deck, the split deck card, and uh, split card deck, and the player cards. Please read the instructions as this description does not cover all aspects of gameplay. You will find it helpful to refer back to the instructions when first playing Stratomatic Hockey. An index is provided on the last page to help you locate specific instructions quickly. Um, face off. You will see occasionally face off. On the goalie cards, anytime there is a face-off, you draw the split card, which if you're going to use them, you draw a split card, refer to this number here. And then you refer to the basic face-off chart over here. It tells you which team gets the wins the face-off and also which player is going to get it. So if we flip that, it's a three. That means the home team which is the Rangers, they get it, and the left defenseman is going to come up with a puck. So that would be Brian Leach. Um, very simple. If you roll a D20, roll a 19. That means the visitor wins the faceoff, so that would be the Red Wings, and the left defenseman comes up with it. And that would be Nicholas Lind Lidstrom. That is how you do a faceoff. And then, as soon as the face-off is done and you determine who wins it, so let's say it was Brian Leach. We'll put a marker there. You draw from the top of the... Now we'll put it over here so you can see it. And we'll scoot Van Beesbrook up a little bit. Okay. That is your action deck right there. You draw from the top of the action deck. This is how you get all play started. So the home team has it. And you're going to see there's a home side and a visitor side. You're going to look at the home side. It says outside shot for left wing. That means Leach got the pass to left winger Adam Greaves. And he can either take an outside shot. And we'll come to this later because if it says outside only, that's his only choice. Outside shot only. But since it just says outside shot, he can either take an outside shot straight up or he can try to use his penetration rating, which is located on the upper right portion of the card. And if he was to do that, well, let's say he's just going to take the outside shot. Um, let's go over the player cards first. So you know what you're looking at. You have outside shot. Let's look here. You've got the name. You've got the team that he plays for. These are ratings for advanced and super advanced. We're not going to concern ourselves with that. It offers the positions that he played. His offensive rating, four is the best, one is the worst. Defensive rating, four is best, one is the worst. If there's a number in parentheses, that is his shorthanded uh, short defense rating. So if there is a penalty and the Red Wings have a power play and Leach is on the ice, he's going to be a two defensive-wise instead of his normal one if the Rangers are shorthanded. A uh, penalty goes from double A, A, B, C, D, D being the least likely to draw a penalty. Breakaway and penetration is a four. Penetration is if you have an outside shot, you can uh, either draw the split deck card and look at the number at the top or roll the D20 and then consult the basic penetration chart. Uh, if he has a rating of four, 
And then 1 to 13, it successfully penetrates. 14 to 20, loses the puck to the opponent. If he's a 3, 1 to 11, and 12 to 20. If he's a 2, 1 to 9. If he's a 1, 1 to 7. And then you go from there. And then the types of shots they have. The outside shot, and all of these columns have 2 through 12, so that's going to be roll 2d6 in order to get the result. The outside shot, it has an inside shot. Now this is a breakaway penetration rating. So penetration is to get from outside to inside. Breakaway is this column right here. If you draw an action card and it were to say possible breakaway, you would go to the split deck card and consult the breakaway portion right here. And it will tell you what player has a breakaway depending on what a player's rating might be. And if they do have a breakaway, then you're going to look at this column right here. So it'll say like uh, Leech, uh, left defenseman, uh, breakaway. If his breakaway penetration rating is 3 or greater, his is a 4, so he would have a breakaway shot. And otherwise lose puck to the opponent, so that would mean McCrimmon would get it. Uh, you have passing, sometimes they'll be called upon to pass. Um, your A through I, primarily, I've never seen anything here in the basic game, so that's probably super advanced only. And same for this portion of defense. The only passing and defense I've seen in basic is J through L at the bottom and 12 through 14 at the bottom. They come in handy. I mean, you've got, um, well, we'll cover what they do later. And also you have uh, statistics so you can see how often they played, how well they played. So let's get back to the play at hand. And we'll try to go through a period and just cover this. And by the way, this is the timekeeping mechanism over here. Once you go through the action card deck, flip the last card, end of the first period. There's 30 cards, roughly 40 seconds transpire per card on average. So let's see, Adam Graves... He has an outside shot. His penetration is four. I think we're going to try to stick him inside a little bit. So we're going to look at this chart here. We roll the d20 and get a 16. He's a four. 14 to 20, lose to opponent. Anytime it says lose to opponent, that means the opposing player uh, right across from him. That's why you set these cards up this way. That's why you have uh, right wing against left wing. So he loses it to East Barrett. Guaranteed that's the wrong way to pronounce it, but I really don't care. Uh, and that was that. When you flip it over, place a discard pile right there. So East Barrett, what do you do next? You draw a card. This is a visitor team, the Red Wings. Opponent defense 13. Look at his opponent. Adam Graves, defense, go down to 13. Adam Graves takes away the puck. So now Graves has it again. What do you do? You draw an action card. Only one. Opponent, defense, 12. Because Graves is the Rangers, they're home. Opponent, defense, 12. Opponent defense is 12. Uh, Issa Barrett takes the puck away. Draw an action card. Visitors. Opponent defense 13. Graves takes the puck away. Well, you've got that down pat. So hopefully we're going to stop with the uh, back and forth here. Draw an action card. Home. Player loses the puck. Outside shot for opponent right defenseman, which will be McCrimmon. Now McCrimmon has the option to either take the outside shot right then or try to penetrate inside. His penetrate rating is a 2, and if you will recall, 2 is only 1 through 9 successful, so he's going to take his outside shot. Let's roll the dice. You go down to 8. It says X rebound. Now, if you ever see like deflect underneath that, that is advanced or super advanced. We're not going to worry about that. Concern ourselves with X rebound. Anytime a result comes up X, it is a shot on goal and a save by the goalie. 
So that is a shot on goal by McCrimmon. It is a save by John Van Beesbrook. And REB is rebound. So we're going to go to the rebound card on the split deck card. Rebounds. Sometimes it comes right out and says it, and it did this time. Offensive left defenseman. So it is rebounded by Lidstrom. Since it's a rebound, he's taking a rebound shot right away. Roll for the shot. 9X DLW. It is a shot on goal, saved by Van Beesbrook, and he clears it out to DLW, the indicated player. Defensive, left wing. So Van Beesbrook clears it out to Graves. What do we do now? Action card. This is the mechanic of the game. This is what keeps it moving forward. Home, passing J. So we're going to look at his passing column. J, inside shot for center. So Graves got it to Messier, in, Messier inside. He is going to take an inside shot against uh, Tim Chevelde, Detroit. And guaranteed I got that one wrong too. So inside shot, let's roll. Four is the roll. And the result is goalie rating. Now you may notice here, if it was number three, it would have been goal one to 13. You draw the split deck card and refer to this number up here to see if it falls within the range for a goal or simply roll the D20. But we have goalie rating, so whenever it's goalie rating, you're going to go to the goalie card. And you'll notice on the goalie card, it's numbered 2 through 12. So you're going to roll the D6s again. And 7, goal. Mark Messier scores a goal. So the Rangers are up one to nothing. What do you do after the goal? You do a face-off. So let's roll for the face-off. That's a six. And we look at the chart. Face-off six. Home team, the Rangers come away with it. Recovered by the right wing. So that will be Gartner. So Gartner has got the puck, and he's going to bring it up the ice with an action card. He loses the puck, outside shot, for left defenseman. So Lidstrom has an outside shot. His breakaway penetration is three. We might try to stick him inside. Let's give it a shot. He rolls a five. Now remember, right now it's an outside shot. He's trying to get inside to a higher percentage shot. He is a three. One through 11, he rolled a five. He successfully penetrates. Now he takes an inside shot. So we're going to look now at his inside shot column. Roll 2d10 for a shot on Van Beesbrook. Rolls an 11. It says XDC. That means shot on goal, X is a save by Van Beesbrook, and he clears it out to the defensive center, which is Mark Messier. Messier is going to bring the puck up the ice with an action card. Possible breakaway. Now you take a split deck card, the top one off the deck, and we look at the breakaway section on the top. It's a breakaway for the left wing if his breakaway and penetration rating is 4. If not, Messier loses it to Ezerman, his opponent. Left wing, Adam Graves, his rating is a 4. So it is a breakaway shot for Adam Graves. Discard that to the top of your discard pile for your split deck card. Breakaway shot, we're looking at this column right here. Coming in on Chevalde. Chevalier, Day, uh, Chevrolet, whatever. He's playing for Detroit. Call him Chevy. Tim Chevy rolls a three. The result is X, DLW. Shot on goal. X is a save by Chevy. Uh, Chevrolet. And uh, it is cleared out to DLW, defensive left wing. 
Sergey Fedorov. I got that name right. <laughs> Fedorov with the puck. He's going to bring it up the ice with an action card. So he, visitors, outside shot for any player. That means you go with the highest rated players that are on your side, on your team. And we see East Barrett is a four. McCrimmon is a two. Ezerman is a four. Lidstrom is a four on offense, the offensive rating. And Fedorov is a four. So any of these four players can take the shot. You generally want to alternate them. So we're going to start with East Barrett. Democratic, left to right. And that is an outside shot for any player. Well, his breakaway penetration rating is 4. So we're going to try to get inside. 17. His breakaway penetration rating is 4. We rolled a 17. 4. 14 to 20. He loses the puck to his opponent. So Adam Graves is going to bring the puck up the ice with an action card and you'll notice the forward lines change card has just come up so we're going to finish this and go to the point where the next card needs to be drawn and we're going to blow the whistle and we're going to change lines at that time but as of right now home passing k look in the passing column k is inside shot for right wing mike gartner has an inside shot. So we're going to look at his inside shot column, the second column. Roll the D6s. Five. Goalie rating. Remember what we do? We go to the goalie's card. We roll these again. Seven. Goal by Gartner. That is two nothing Rangers and it brings us to the line change. So move the line change card off to the side somewhere. So we're going to change the forward lines. I'm going to spread these out a little bit more so that way we don't like destroy them as we do it. So if you've already got your forward lines prepared, simply remove your forward line. And they'll come back in later in the period because there's another forward line change. So for the Rangers, that will bring in, drop the cards on the floor. That's always a good strategy for a fat man. Ah, one moment, technical difficulty, holiday wait from 1993. All right, Chris King is the new left winger. New center is Darren Turcott and Tony Amani. Right winger for the Rangers. So we're going to do our line change for Detroit as well. So let us go ahead and remove the forward line. And bring in the second forward line, which will consist of Ray Shepard, right winger, who will be playing across from King. Now you can see how they align these up alternately, so that way if you lose the puck to the opponent or anything happens to the opponent, it refers to the opposing player of the player that is in control of the puck, which is denoted by whatever you use for a marker. Uh, center will be Kevin Miller. Left wing, Sean Burr. All right. So let's get back to the action. After a line change, face off. We roll an 11. Face off, 11. Home, any player. So that will mean any player at all the coach chooses. And we're going to... Um, what kind of passing do we have inside? Yeah, Leach has got great passing skills, so we're going to let Leach have it. He's going to bring the puck up the ice with an action card. Home, outside shot for center. So Turcotte has an outside shot. 
His breakaway penetration is a 4, which will be 1 to 13. He makes it inside. And 2 out of 3, I, almost, I, I always try to bring it in. 8, he is successful. He has an inside shot on Mr. Chevrolet over here. So we're going to roll and consult his second column inside. Rolls a 10. Goalie rating plus. You will occasionally see goalie rating plus. Goalie rating plus is for power plays. If he takes that shot on a power play, then you would do it as normal. In normal playing, that is a shot on goal, a save, and the goalie covers it up. So that is a shot on goal by Turcotte, a save by uh, Chevrolet, and he covers it up. So now you have a face-off on the defense, on the uh, Detroit defensive end of the ice. Let's just mark it over here, closer to this goalie. Well, now what happens, you do a face-off like normal. If, an, if the home team, which is over here, and you're on this end, closer to the visiting team's net, if the home team recovers the face-off, they can immediately take an outside shot or penetrate for an inside shot. If the defensive team, which is closest to their net, recovers the face-off, then you start with an action card, just like you normally would any other face-off. So we are on the Detroit end. So if any Rangers recover the face-off, they can immediately take an outside shot or penetrate. So here's the face-off. We roll a four, and that is going to be a Ranger puck. Home right defenseman. Number four. So that means James Patrick is going to have a shot. He is breakaway penetration three. We're going to try. That's one to 11. I'll show you on here just so you can see us doing it again. Breakaway penetration chart, 3, 1 to 11. He rolled a 3, so if he gets an inside shot on Chevrolet, 8, X, dash, R-E-B. Shot on goal by Patrick, saved by Chevrolet, possible, and it's a rebound situation. Draw the top split deck card. And rebound is defensive center. This is the offense. This is the defense. Kevin Miller is the center. So since we're on this end of the ice, you don't take a rebound shot. You simply draw an action card. Visitors lose puck outside shot for center. So that means outside shot for Turcotte. Breakaway penetration is 4, so he's going to try to stick it inside. He does so. 1 to 13 was successful. So an inside shot on Chevrolet. 7, goalie rating. Chevrolet's card, 6, save either defenseman. So it is a shot on goal by Turcotte. It is a save by Chevrolet, and he is going to clear it over to Lidstrom. Pick the defensive men you want. Uh, draw an action card. Lidstrom's going to bring it up the ice. Good. We have a penalty. I hope. Yep. No. We don't. All right. No problem. I'll show you the power play. Anyway, visitors. Opposing defensive players penalty rating. If it is AA, A, B, or C, there is a two-minute penalty. Patrick's rating, who is Lidstrom's opponent, his rating is D. If the penalty rating is D, Patrick takes the puck away and has outside shot only. So it is a D, so he takes the puck away from Lidstrom. He has an outside shot. It says only, so he may not try to penetrate. Outside only. Firing on Chevrolet, a 7 X dash DLD. Shot on goal by Patrick. X is a save. DLD, he clears it to the defensive left, and he took the shot. The defensive left defenseman. Kind of redundant, but that's what it is. So Lidstrom ends up with the puck again. He'll bring it back up the ice again. 
Visitors, loose puck, outside shot, RW, right wing. So Tony Amani with an outside shot for the Rangers. He's got a four penetration, so he's going to try to get inside. And almost didn't make it. That 15 kicked over at the last second. But Amani, he gets inside successfully. He's going to take an inside shot against Chevrolet. Eight. X, R-E-B. Shot on goal. X is a save by Chevrolet. R-E-B is a rebound. Take the top split deck card. Rebounds. Offense. Any player. Also, injury. Take shot, then pick split card and refer to the injury section. So we're going to take the shot. Okay. And it says possible injury. No, it says also injury. Anyway, offense. Any player, take the shot on the rebound. We're going to give it to Chris King. Since he hasn't done anything, he's going to take a rebound shot. 9X DRD. Shot on goal. X is a save by Chevrolet. Defensive right defenseman. So McCrimmon takes the puck. Now we check for the injury. Injury. Home team, right wing for remainder of game. It means Amante is out. So we need to bring in another right winger to replace him in the second line. So give me a moment and we'll do that. Yep, this is New York. And yep, we've got a right winger. We're going to bring in Paul Broughton. Paul Broughton is going to come in and play right wing on the second line for the New York Rangers. Uh, that's stopped play, so we start play again with a face-off at center ice. We roll a 19. 19, visitor left defense. So Red Wings come up with it. And Nicholas Lidstrom has the puck. He brings it up the ice with a action card. Visitor, opponent defense 12. His opponent, James Patrick, defense 12, takes the puck away. He would need to draw a card, but we have come to a defenseman line change. So let us go ahead and do that, and then we will proceed with another faceoff. So defenseman line change, and you change the defense lines. So for New York, take out the left defenseman. And the right defenseman. Replace them with the second line, which will be Joe Sorella, Jeff Bukaboom. Now you go to Detroit. Remove their right defenseman and their left defenseman. Do it in whatever order you want. It's just kind of got them on the table. And you replace them with the second defenseman line. Right defenseman is Steve, not even gonna try it. <laughs> Cheese on, chase on, chass on, cheese on, chiss on, chiass on, I don't know. Left defenseman, Vladimir Konstantinov. Yeah, I can pronounce that one pretty good. We have done the defenseman line change as dictated by the fast action card. And you'll notice these are all face down, but the line change cards are face up. So it's you can tell it's time to do the line change. You don't have to flip the card to do it. So let us go with the face off. Center ice. And specify center ice so that way it's not at one end or the other. And one team or the other gets an opportunity for outside shots. Center ice face offs always start with an action card. So we roll an eight. Home, right defenseman. So that one is taken by Bukaboom. He's going to bring it up the ice with an action card. And now we get to see how a power play works. 
Opposing defensive players penalty rating. Double A, A, B, C, or D. That's all of them. Two minute penalty. So that means Konstantinov has incurred a penalty. So now you do... You get your power play and short team lines ready. If you have already ahead of time, that's fine. You don't have to make separate ones. You can make minor adjustments with who is already on the board. Um, for the shorthanded team, they do not use a center. They have a left wing, a right wing, a left defenseman, and a right defenseman. And since the left defenseman is out on penalty, he's in the box... Need another left defenseman for the Red Wing, so we'll bring in Lidstrom. Now, you go through really to set this up, you want players who have the highest defensive ratings possible to be on your shorthanded team. And you're going to see why here in just a moment. I'm just going with what we've got just to save time. Um, first thing, you do that, you get your Proper lines on the ice. Got to straighten that up. OCD. The second thing you do to mark how much time went on the power play, flip two cards. That's how much time the power play took. Okay, you're not using these cards. There is basic and advanced power play chart. You will see 1 through 10, 11 through 20. You're going to do the split deck card or roll the d10 to determine which of these you're going to do. Once you determine which one you're going to do, there are two conditions based on the shorthanded team's indicated player defensive rating. If it is over a certain point, if it is under a certain point, if you have so many players at a rating, if you have less than so many players at a rating, and then it will give you shorthanded team shots, if any, which are resolved first. This doesn't end the power play. They just simply get the shot. If they get a goal, they got a goal. Then you go to the power play team shots to be taken. And they are taken in number order until either one shot is made, which ends the penalty, or all shots have been taken and none have been made, and then you revert to normal play. So let us go ahead and roll and see which power play scenario, which shot scenario we're going to have for this power play. We roll a nine. Nine, if the defensive left wing's defensive rating is a four, Sean Burr, and his short, he is a defensive rating of five, but he has a parenthesis, which is his shorthand rating. So his defensive rating is only three. So nine, if it had been a four, you would do the breakaway for left defenseman for the shorthanded team and only an inside shot for the right wing. But since his defense is three or less, there's no shorthanded team, uh, shot, team shot. And you have, in order, an inside shot for the center and a rebound shot for the right wing. So first we do the inside shot for the center, which is Darren Turcott Firing on Chevrolet. Inside, five, X, any player. Now, on power play goals... You don't worry about the, the save is the only thing to worry about. You don't worry about the rebound. You don't worry about which player got it. This is just to see if on this type of shot, this player got a goal. And if it had said goalie rating, goalie rating plus, uh, goal, and then a range, a split range, and you roll within the split range, that would be a goal. Anything else, it's not a goal, and you move to the next shot on the list. Number nine. We did the inside shot for the center, and now we get a rebound shot for the right wing. That would be Paul Broughton. And his rebound shot, we're looking at the middle column, rebound slash breakaway. He rolls a 6x defensive left wing. It is saved by Chevrolet, so no power play goals for New York. and We revert to normal play. So let's get Lidstrom back off of there. Put him back over here with McCrimmon. Let's bring Miller back in. 
Let's bring Konstantinov back in, and now we proceed with a face-off at center ice. Rolls a three. Home, left defenseman. Rangers, John Sorella. Joe Sorella, sorry. He's going to bring the puck up the ice with an action card. Home, opposing defensive players penalty rating. Double A, A, B, or C. And chase on is a B, two-minute penalty. Another power play for the Rangers. So we'll take Miller out of there, and we'll bring in uh, McCrimmon, right defenseman. So let's bring him in. So we have no center, two defensemen, two wings. Let's roll for the power play scenario. We roll a 17. 17. If one or more four-rated defensive players, or if no four-rated defensive players, so you're looking for defensive players rated four, defense one, defense three, shorthanded, Defense three shorthanded, defense three shorthanded. 17. If no four rated defensive players, the power play team has five shots. Outside shot for left defenseman is first. Joe Sorella, outside shot. Two, goal, one through four. It's a goal. That ends it. That ends the power play. And we do have to take two of these. And there is a line change for the forward. So now we will make the forward line change. Another goal for New York. 3 nothing. With that line change, there's 10 cards left. So about 7 minutes left in the first period. So let's get McCrimmon off. Let's put these guys back in. Chison and Miller. And now let's do our forward line change for both teams. And then we will have a face-off to continue the first period. We're only doing one period. We're pretty much covering all of it. We'll go through the rule book and make sure there's nothing that we missed. Oh. Let's get him out of there. Mark Messier is back. He's going to rule the roost. Gartner. I, I, I love those guys. Brett Hall, Brent uh, Suter, Mark Messier, Mario Lemieux. I, I enjoyed watching some and playing on Super NES, EA Sports, NHL Hockey 94, whatever it was. That was most of my indoctrination into NHL hockey. Um, I've never followed hockey. Um, I watch hockey games in the Olympics. So, <laughs> but I, I know basically the rules. Um, I had a guy that was uh, born in uh, West Islip on Long Island, and he just oh, he had, he drilled hockey into my head. And yes, I did pronounce it Long Island. <laughs> Some things just kind of take, I guess. Uh, East Barrett, Stevie Ezerman, and Sergei Fedorov. Face off at center ice. Six. Six would be home right wing. So that will be New York Rangers. Mike Gartner has control of the puck. He brings it up ice with an action card. Loses the puck. Possible breakaway. Split action card. Split deck card. Breakaway. Left defenseman. So he loses the puck, and the left defenseman, Vladimir Konstantinov, has a breakaway shot on Van Beesbrook. Six. XDRD, shot on goal by Konstantinov, saved by Van Beesbrook, cleared to 
DRD, defensive right defenseman, Buka Boom. He'll bring it up the ice with an action card. Home, opposing defense player's penalty rating, double A, A, B. Konstantinov is a B. Two-minute penalty. We're going to... We're going to skip that just to go with it. We'll make it uh, take... We're going to move this along a little. You've seen the power play, how it works. Um, CD, we'll make it a B. Takes away puck. He has outside shot only. So Konstantinov is taking outside shot only. Rolls a 5. Lose to DC. No shot on goal. He loses control of the puck to the defensive center, DC. So Messier comes up with it. He takes an action card. Outside shot for right wing. Did I do the right part of that card? No, I didn't. It was lose puck outside shot for left wing anyway. I'm sorry, visiting side. So when Ken Stantinov had it, his card for visitors was actually lose puck outside shot for left wing. Let's do it correctly. Lost a puck. Left wing is Adam Graves. Let's do this correctly. Five. Save defensive right defenseman. XDRD. Chase on comes up with it. He'll do an action card. And it's a penalty against Sorella. Sorry, we're skipping penalties at this point. Passing K. Inside shot for C. Center. Stevie Ezerman with an inside shot on Van De, on Van Beesbrook. Nine goal one through fourteen. Goal for the Red Wings. It is three to one. Three to one, New York. So we have a face off at center ice. Seventeen. Visitor. Left wing, Detroit, Sergei Fedorov, right over there, and I'm going to hurt you, Ville. He brings it up the ice with an action card. Visitors, passing L. Inside shot, anybody. The great pass, question mark, that's another advanced or super advanced, disregard it. In shot, dash, any. Inside shot, anyone. So, East Barrett took one earlier. We'll give this one to Chase on. He's an offense four. Alternate him around. So, inside shot for Chase on on Van Beesbrook. Ten. Goalie rating. Van Beesbrook rolls a five. Save. Clears it to any forward. So, he's going to clear it to Gartner. He brings it up the ice with an action card. Home loses puck. Outside shot for opponent. We've done Easebert. We've done Chase on. We'll give this one to Ezerman. Outside shot. His penetration is a four. He's going to try to get inside. One to 13. He is successful. Inside shot. Eight. X R E B. Shot on goal by Ezerman. X is saved by Van Beesbrook. Rebound situation. Split deck card. Rebounds. Offensive right wing. If offense rating is three or more. He's bare to four. So he gets the rebound shot in his rebound column right there. Discard this card. Roll for the rebound shot. Eight. X. Rebound. Again. Shot on goal. X is a save. Rebound. Offensive center. If offensive rating is two or more. Ezerman offensive rating is a four. So now he's got a rebound shot. They're hacking away at Van Beesbrook. Rolls a six. Goalie rating. Nine. Goal. It's too much of an onslaught. And Van Beesbrook, they finally find the crease in the seam, the seam in the crease, whatever it might be. Goal, Detroit, 3-2. to two. So we have a face-off at center ice. 
getting real low in the action cards here. Probably about three minutes left in the first period. We roll a 15. Visitor, left defenseman. So that is going to be Konstantinov. He's going to bring the puck up the ice with an action card. And there is uh, two, two cards remaining after that. Visitor, lose puck, outside shot for right defenseman. That will be Bukaboom. His pen breakaway penetration is only one. He's going to take the outside shot, not risk losing the puck. Nine, outside shot, X, DLW. Shot on goal, X is a save. Defensive left wing, Sergei Fedorov. Has the puck, brings it up the ice with an action card. Visitors, lose puck, possible breakaway. Split deck card, only one of them. Breakaway, right wing, so since he lost the puck, it's going to be this team, and it doesn't say defensive right wing, so right wing indicates offensive right wing, the team that is going to have the puck. He lost it, so right wing, which is Mike Gartner, if breakaway penetration is three or more, it is a four. So he has a breakaway shot. Mike Gartner. We're going to look at this column right here. Rebound slash breakaway. Rolls a nine. Goalie rating on Chevrolet. Yeah, this guy over here. We forgot about him. Eleven. It's a goal. 4-2 New York. Nearing the end of the first period, and the Rangers already have a two-goal lead. 4-2. Oh, that's going to bring us to a face-off at center ice. 14. Visitor. Right wing. That is going to be Isbert. He's going to bring it up with the final action card of the period. Visitors. Inside shot for any player. And this one's going to go to Fedorov. Four, four, four was the last one for Ezerman. Fedorov gets an inside shot on Van Beesbrook. Five. Goalie rating. Roll Van Beesbrook's card. Six. It is a save. And that ends the first period. Then you change your lines. Uh, reshuffle the action deck. Reinsert the line change cards into the action deck. Play your second period. Um, make sure you get the ice shoveled. Because that has to be done for safe skating. <laughs> uh, guys, that's, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, I really don't think there was anything that we did not cover. Um, let's look at everything here. We pretty much covered everything. Inside shot, outside shot, shot for any player. Passing, opponent defense, face-offs, shooting, lose puck, um, outside shot only, and possible breakaway. Uh, penalty card. Yeah, we did penalties. We did power plays. We did saves, the X. Any defensive player, rebound, um... Goalie ratings, breakaways, goalie splits. Goal and goal followed by split number. Goal plus, goalie rating plus. Remember, goal plus or goalie rating plus. It, if it's not a power play shot on goal, then it is shot on goal, save, covers up, face off in the defensive end of the ice. And the offense and the team, let's say this is New York, if it's a face-off down here, if a ranger gets control of the puck, you draw the action card. Since it's on the New York end of the ice, if a red wing gets control of the puck, that player can automatically go for an outside shot or try to penetrate and get an inside shot. Uh, we did penetration, we did outside shots, we did power play team, shorthanded team, resolving the power play. We pretty much covered all of the rules, guys, so if there's any questions you have, please put them in the comments. Um, 
but that's that's all I got for you guys. This has been Stratomatic Delaware Chris. Guys, keep your stick on the ice. We're all pulling for you. Have a great evening.